Excellent, excellent. Poor Charles is beginning to feel the full brunt of the storm now. Only a matter of time, wouldn't you say, Mr. Scorpio? I'd say you'd better be out of your bloody tree if you think you can get away with this. Oh, but I am getting away with it, as you can plainly see. Tony should see this, because do you have any idea where they are? Ah, uh, Victor, look at the increasing fury of the storm. Yes, the carbonic snow we've dropped by rocket is remarkably effective. But, Mikos, isn't it a little unusual that Tony didn't show up and Scorpio's presence sounded up the general alarm? Oh, I find nothing unusual about that. But I went to the room. They're not there. Where could they possibly be? We'll discuss this later. Good morning, gentlemen. And Mr. Scorpio. Well, Albert, I always appreciated your sunny disposition. Breakfast is ready, sir. I've informed the others. Ah, splendid. Being at the threshold of success must give everyone quite an appetite. So I can appreciate that. I'm a spot empty myself. Release our guests. Amigos, please. Wait. No, no, no. I have no concern, Victor. Where could he go? What could he do? Mr. Scorpio is a guest of our new world of the future. He's no longer a prisoner. He's much too bright to resist the inevitable. I'm deeply flattered. <laughs> Come, Mr. Scorpio, share our humble table. Hmm? Freshly caught, sir, and broiled to perfection. No, oh, splendid. My favorite, Albert. Please serve the others. General, where is Corinne? She asked me to send her apologies. Apologies? No, she's frightened about the possibility of uh, intruders, so she prefers to stay in her room. <laughs> <laughs> it would appear that the problem of intruders has been solved. Yes, a point I must reluctantly concede to. Well, personally, I feel much safer now that Mikos has caught the only uninvited guest that we're going to have. Well, perhaps you're right, Tiffany, but uh, Corinne may have an intuitive sense that we should at least consider. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, what if there are others on the island? Could be rather sticky, wicked, what? My men have covered every inch of the island, Nigel. We will be well protected. But not as well as we may have thought. Is that not right, General? You have a complaint, Victor? Gentlemen, please. We have a guest at our table. Please don't let me stop a family mudsling. <laughs> Ah, well, you are, after all, an emissary of Valentine, Mr. Scorpio. We do want you to enjoy your breakfast. Mikos, what about Tony and Alex? As you can see, they are still missing. We're indebted to you, Victor, for your powers of observation. Tony and Alex left the island during the night to fly back to New York City. Hmm. First Max and Noah, and now Tony and Alex. You know, all these sudden departures it is a bit unusual, you know, old chap. No, nobody even says goodbye. Well, you see, it was a last-minute decision. I wanted a more direct contact with Ballantyne as the zero hour for Port Charles approaches. Do you find our guard uniforms practical, Mr. Scorpio? wouldn't go to war without one. Oh, you show very good taste. <laughs> General, can you give me an explanation for this? Have any of your men reported a uniform missing? No, sir. But give me a few moments alone with Mr. Scorpio. I'll solve the mystery. Must you always speak in terms of brute force, General? Aye. You know, it's difficult to believe that our island's security could be penetrated by one man working alone. Well, the difficult I do immediately. The impossible takes a tad longer. I think you're lying, Scorpio. Where are your friends? You wouldn't know the answer to that, Victor. They're back in Port Charles, dead. You do recall that little incident on the dock, don't you? You had Clay and O'Reilly shot in the back. Wiped out my entire team. I owe you for that. He's lying. Well, look, hey, I'm sorry, fellas. I mean, whatever turns you on. I mean, I'm a poor one-man band. If you want to give me credit for being the whole box and dice, then go for it. That's it. Now I remember. What are you talking about, Nigel? This chap, Mr. Scorpio. Hey, I've been trying to place the accent, but I, I couldn't connect it with the uniform. Now I remember. I ran into you several times on board the yacht while we were en route to the island, right? Sorry, sport. You've got a wrong number. No, no, no. I'm absolutely positive. Why, I even remember sharing the sauna with you. That day I barged in. You were there with your two young friends. What? <laughs> the, uh, the attractive young lady and the young fellow with the curly hair. <laughs> Don't you try your tricks on me, Mr. Scorpio. I'm sure you're the chap I remember on the boat. 
Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm absolutely positive it was you. Well, now, perhaps you'd care to change your story, Mr. Scorpio. Well, I've always said that when you've got your hand caught in the till, out with it, Scorpio, the truth. <clears throat> your friend there is absolutely right, uh, Kalua. I was on board the boat. A stowaway. <sighs> I must admit that the accommodations left a lot to be desired. Now it all makes sense. The crewman that was found unconscious, and the wires in the radio room that had been tempered with, and all the time I thought it was Max. Max wanted a larger piece of the pie. I had to terminate our arrangement. Arrangement? We were partners. Mm. At least it started out that way. Mm. And what about the others? I'm sorry, Mikos, I can't give you a big finish. There are no others, just Max and me. And what if Max were to deny this alleged partnership? Then you'd have to make up your own mind as to who you wanted to believe. I believe Max over this scum. Oh, your loyalty is commendable, but it won't be necessary to bring Max into this. I think we'll find a solution when we've heard more about these two companions of yours in the sauna. Merely crew members. I mean, we hardly got to first name terms. Well, you seem jolly friendly. Well, what else do you do when you've got no clothes on? Well, quite right, actually, if you look at it from that point of view. <laughs> You are either a very skillful liar, Mr. Scorpio, or a man who has wisely made peace with the inevitable. Well, we've at least narrowed it down a spot, haven't we? Mm. Well, this is all quite amusing, but I don't see what on earth you're so concerned about. The poor man's already confessed. I think they should end it. Well, in any case, I admire your courage, Mr. Scorpio. It's a shame you chose to be on the wrong side. I'm beginning to get that feeling myself. But you'll be useful, nevertheless. Glad I can be of service. Yes, once I've made contact with Valentine and let him hear your voice, then he will know that uh, without his esteemed agent's help, he's lost all advantage. And then, finally, the world must capitulate. What about him? Oh, I found him to be a delightful guest. <laughs> Although he did drop in rather unexpectedly. As to his ultimate disposition, I presume I may trust you to handle such matters. With great pleasure. And the name is Kaluga. A small K or a capital K. 